The look on Aunt Celia's face was worth every sleepless night, every eye roll, every moment I questioned my path over the last six years. But let me start from the beginning. My name is Emily Kim, and I've never done things the conventional way. While my cousins were attending elite universities on the East Coast, I stayed in Seattle, working full-time at my family's biotech manufacturing firm, Everlin Labs. At night, I enrolled in an online program focused on automation engineering, not because I wasn't accepted to top schools. I was. But because I saw a different future than they did. I believed the future of biotech wouldn't be led by outdated routines. It would be transformed by robotics, machine learning, and smart systems. To shape that future, I needed to understand both the science and the day-to-day realities of production. Still chasing your virtual fantasy degree, Aunt Celia would sneer when she passed my office, now filled with wires, code, and prototypes. She had inherited the company after my mom. Her younger sister passed away from cancer in 2019. The 12% stake left to me was treated as symbolic at best. Biotech thrives on reputation, Emily, she'd tell the board. Not garage ideas and online certificates. But while she dismissed me, I was paying attention. Watching other firms wrestle with the same issues we had, bottlenecks, contamination, inconsistency, I studied them, and I knew we could beat them with the right tech. My cousin Evan, Aunt Celia's pride and joy, laughed at me once in the cafeteria. Freshly minted from Wharton and already promoted to COO, he said, she's never giving control to someone who graduated from Zoom U. I didn't respond, I just worked. And when I patented a system that boosted output by 300% and slashed overhead, the board finally looked to me, not as a backup, but as the future. I wasn't the girl with the online degree anymore. I was the woman who saved their legacy, her company. That's what they all called it. They forgot that my mother was the one who turned Everlin Labs from a tiny regional lab into a competitive biotech force. They forgot that her shares, now mine, were earned with vision and risk, not vanity and titles. But I didn't forget, and I hadn't been wasting my time. For three years, while the rest of the company dismissed me as the tech-obsessed niece, I worked quietly, methodically, on a project that could change everything. By day, I was just Emily Kim, a mid-level employee buried in quality control. By night, in my one-bedroom Seattle apartment turned makeshift lab, I was building a revolution. I called it AI and NI, Adaptive Neurointelligence System. Not just another automation tool, ANICE was an AI-powered manufacturing brain. It could self-diagnose production errors before they happened, recalibrate drug formulations in real time, and optimize efficiency far beyond current industry standards, all while surpassing FDA compliance thresholds. I filed the patent under my name alone. Aunt Celia never asked me to sign an IP agreement for after-hours work. She thought my side projects were beneath her attention. That arrogance would cost her everything. The same week my patent was approved, Everlin Labs hit a crisis. Our biggest competitor rolled out a new semi-automated platform, slashing their production costs by 30%. Our stock tumbled. Investors panicked. Aunt Celia called an emergency shareholder meeting. I sat quietly in the back as she stumbled through a weak promise of streamlined protocols. Michael, her golden boy COO, and my cousin fidgeted nervously beside her. They didn't know three batches had failed FDA quality checks that very week. I did. I'd flagged the reports myself. Perhaps, I said aloud, voice steady cutting through the tension, we should discuss alternative solutions. Celia's head snapped toward me. This isn't the time for your theories, Emily. I stood. Actually, it's exactly the time, especially since you've been hiding batch failures from the board. Gasps. A low murmur spread across the room. Sit down, Michael said stiffly. This isn't your arena. Maybe it wasn't, I replied, opening my briefcase, until I brought the solution your company is now desperate for. I pulled out the patent, my name stamped across the top. I connected my laptop to the projector. Let me introduce you to ANICs Alive, operational platform I've been quietly testing in a restricted section of our facility. Celia went pale. You did what? She hissed. 
I smiled. As quality control supervisor, I have contractual authority to implement test systems. You signed off on that clause yourself. The screen lit up. Real-time dashboards, analytics, predictive alerts, everything a and had been doing behind the scenes. For three months, this system has run parallel to our main line. Let's look at the results. Slide after slide, the numbers spoke. 45% reduction in production costs. 98% fewer quality failures. Real-time adaptations no human team could match. This isn't just a fix. It's the future. Michael stood up sputtering. Those figures aren't possible. They are, I replied calmly. The FDA conducted an unannounced inspection last week. Want to see their initial report? Celia gripped the table. This is unauthorized. Ill Actually, it's by the book, I said, flipping to the contract clause. And the patent? It's mine, not the company's. Not yours. The room buzzed. First confusion, then realization. Investors leaned forward. Whispers turned to excitement. We can license this, one said. We can spin it into its own division, said another. I saw dollar signs in their eyes. More importantly, I saw respect. Celia sat frozen. Michael looked lost. Sometimes, the best revenge isn't confrontation. It's standing tall while everyone who underestimated you realizes they were never even in your league. I closed my presentation. My mother built this company's legacy with vision. I intend to protect it with innovation. And judging by the board's reaction, they were ready to follow me. Not the niece. Not the backup plan. But Emily Kim, the future of Everlyn Labs. One shareholder called out, Will other companies really pay for this? They already have, I replied calmly. This morning, I received offers from three major biotech corporations. You could have heard a pin drop. They're very interested in the fact that Everlyn Labs doesn't own the patent rights. Aunt Celia shot up so fast her chair clattered to the floor. This is outrageous. You developed this while working for us. The company owns... Nothing, I interrupted, meeting her glare head on. I developed the entire system, every algorithm, every prototype, on my own time, in my own apartment, using my own funds. I held up the patent packet. This is registered to Emily Kim, not Everlyn Labs, and your repeated insistence that my work was worthless means you never asked me to sign an intellectual property agreement. My attorneys have documented everything. I clicked to the final slide, a chart forecasting the company's future with and without ANIS. The difference was devastating. Without it, I said, we lose FDA certification in six months. Our competitors are using smarter systems. We're lagging behind with processes that should have been retired five years ago. With ANIS, I continued, gesturing to the soaring graph. We don't just catch up, we lead. At that moment, the boardroom doors opened. Three visitors entered. Celia's face turned from rage to a stunned blank. Allow me to introduce David Chin from Merck, Sarah Williams from Moderna, and Thomas Rodriguez from Genentech. I said with a smile. Each of them has expressed interest in acquiring the patent. I invited them today to observe ANIS in action. Michael stood, voice strained. This is a closed shareholders meeting. You can't just... I can, I replied smoothly, holding up a leather folder. As a shareholder, I have the right to invite outside observers to any non-confidential technology demonstration. It's in the bylaws. The ones dad wrote. The guests took their seats, expressions focused on the screen. So, here's the choice, I continued. Everlyn Labs can license my technology. You retain control, but pay market rates for use of ANIS. Or, I look toward the industry reps. I can accept one of the very generous offers on the table. Celia slammed a fist on the table. This is blackmail. No, I said evenly. This is business the kind of business you said I'd never understand with my worthless online degree. I pulled out a final document, thick and detailed. This is my formal offer. Exclusive licensing rights to ANII, with several conditions. What conditions? Asked a shareholder, leaning forward eagerly. First, I said, 
a restructuring of the board. My mother's vision was about progress and innovation, not stagnation and ego. We need leadership that reflects that. Delia's face twisted. You want my position? No, I said firmly. I want the position I've earned, chief technology officer, with a seat on the board. The licensing agreement is contingent upon that appointment. The room went silent, the weight of the moment hung in the air. Michael, usually full of Ivy League confidence, asked, And if we say no? I turned again to the visitors. Then I walk. My patent, my system, my terms. An older board member, Mr. Alder, who'd known my mother, spoke up. Celia, we need to vote. Now. Celia looked around the room, no support. Her reign, built on control and intimidation, was unraveling. This isn't over, she hissed. Actually, I replied, it is. I nodded toward my attorney, who stepped forward and handed each board member a sealed envelope. What now? Sela snapped. The results of an internal audit I commissioned three months ago, I said. It uncovered several irregularities in recent FDA compliance filings, irregularities that aligned precisely with Michael's promotion to VP of Operations. Michael paled. Celia opened her envelope. But the full report has already been submitted to the appropriate federal agencies, I said, keeping my voice steady. So you have a choice. Accept my proposal or explain to regulators why your records don't match actual batch data. Chaos erupted. Board members whispered, huddled, argued. I stood calmly at the front, watching everything my family once used to dismiss me. Status, fear, tradition, crumble. Dad used to tell me, you don't fight power with anger. You replace it with something stronger. As they called for an immediate vote, I caught my reflection in the boardroom glass. This time, I didn't just see Dad's determination in my stance. I saw his pride. Six months can change everything. I stood in what was once Aunt Celia's office, now mine, overlooking the newly renovated production floor of Everlyn Labs. Below me, a and I hummed quietly, its intelligent algorithms coordinating a seamless ballet of automation, data calibration, and precision pharmaceutical output. Since full implementation, our production efficiency had soared by 250% and our stock price had tripled. We'd gone from surviving to defining the future. The door swung open. Maria Rodriguez, our new VP of operations, entered with a smile and a thick folder in hand. The FDA inspectors just left, she said, grinning. They're calling us the new gold standard in biotech manufacturing. They even want to model future regulations after our systems. I smiled, remembering how Aunt Celia once warned that my garage project would destroy the company's credibility. She'd been wrong. About that, about me, about everything. The fallout from that fateful shareholders meeting had been immediate. The board had voted unanimously to accept my proposal, not just because of the patent, but because of the truth the audit revealed. Michael had been falsifying compliance records for months. When the full investigation concluded, he faced multiple charges. Celia had no choice but to resign, her silence had made her complicit. Have you seen today's Wall Street Journal? Maria asked, handing me the paper. The headline read, Everlyn Labs Redefines Biotech Manufacturing. Stock soars amid AI breakthrough. Beneath that, in smaller print, former CEO Celia Whitman under sex scrutiny in separate venture. I skimmed it briefly, then set it aside. Celia wasn't my concern anymore. I had more important things to focus on. Like the Emily Kim Innovation Fellowship, launched in my mother's name, offering scholarships to students pursuing biotech automation, especially those from non-traditional backgrounds. My phone buzzed. A message from Dr. Sarah Chin at MIT. Her team wanted to collaborate on expanding ANIS into CRISPR and cell therapy manufacturing. Five years ago, I couldn't have gotten MIT to answer my emails. Now, they were calling me. A knock on the door broke my train of thought. To my surprise, it was Aunt Helen, Celia's sister and longtime silent observer. Emily, she said gently. Do you have a moment? I gestured for her to sit across from me, 
She hesitated, clearly uneasy in the space where her sister once ruled. I wanted to thank you, she began quietly, for what you did, for Liam. Leia, Sully's younger son, had always been different from the rest of the family. Quiet, technical, hands-on. He'd been taking online courses in robotics engineering for years, hiding them from his mother. After the leadership transition, I found his job application rejected under Celia's orders. I brought him into the tech division. Now, Liam was thriving. Liam earned his place, I said simply, just like everyone else here. Helen's eyes watered. Celia was wrong. About education, about you, about how this company should be run, she paused. Your mother would be proud. Would she? I glanced around the office. The heavy oak furniture was gone. The space was bright, open, filled with technical schematics, digital dashboards, and photographs of our diverse engineering teams. The value she raised me with, integrity, vision, and self-determination, were alive in every inch of this building. A soft chime came from my desktop. ANIS had just corrected a pressure variance in one of our clean rooms in real time. Another quiet miracle. Another reason I'd never regret the road I took. Auxilia, I asked, though I already knew. Industry newsletters tracked her every failed startup, each doomed by her refusal to adapt. She's adjusting, Helen said carefully. The SEC investigation's taking its toll, but maybe it's what she needed. She's finally starting to see the world's changed. And it had. Everland Labs wasn't just a family business anymore. It was a biotech powerhouse, valued at over $2 billion, zero cents, with major firms licensing our tech and students from around the world applying to join us. My assistant buzzed in. The quarterly board meeting was about to start. Helen stood. I heard about your scholarship fund, she said at the door. Celia saw it too. She never said anything. But I think she finally understands what she missed. After she left, I walked down to the production floor. No one looked up. That was a good thing. They were too focused, too passionate, too proud of their roles in shaping this new era. Liam was at his station, calibrating one of ANIS's sensory modules. His online degree in robotics engineering was framed on the wall, just like mine upstairs. How's the calibration? I asked. He grinned, eyes sparkling. Almost too perfect. Just the way we built it. The AI suggested a sensory alignment, improving accuracy by another 3%. I watched ANIS adapt in real time, still amazed that what began as messy sketches taped to my apartment wall had grown into this. An industry redefining system, now studied by MIT and benchmarked by the FD. The future of biotech manufacturing, born from the persistence of a young woman with an online degree who simply refused to believe her education was worthless. Back upstairs, I opened my desk drawer and pulled out an old nameplate once displayed on Aunt Celia's desk. Celia Whitman, CEO, embossed in thick, gleaming brass. I dropped it in the recycling bin without a second glance. The nameplate on my desk was simpler, sleek, clean. Emily Kim, Chief Technology Officer. Beneath it was a small inscription. The first line of code I ever wrote for Anais, back when it was only a dream, and a few notes in the margins of my class lectures. The quarterly board meeting would begin soon, another record-breaking quarter, more innovations to unveil. But first, I drafted a quick message to the head of our scholarship program, double the number of online degree scholarships next year, and add this to the application. No degree is worthless if you have the vision to use it. Because the real triumph wasn't revenge, it was transformation. Success isn't defined by the school you attended, but by the courage to build something meaningful from what you've learned. And Celia had been right about one thing. Tradition did matter in biotech, but she forgot. Every tradition begins with someone daring to break the mold. As I walked toward the boardroom, I passed our newly updated mission statement. Everlyn Labs, where innovation meets integrity. And beneath it, in smaller print, the words, my mother lived by. Education is never worthless. Vision is priceless. She'd been right all along.